Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's say you've been doing your research to get your first RC car and you've decided to pick up a Tamiya RC car kit. I already have a video that tells you five things that you need to buy along with the kit. I'm going to link it in the description below. Well, today I want to dive a little deeper into the electronics of an RC car. I'm going to help you understand what each part of the electronic components do and how it makes the RC car drive. I'm going to talk about everything from the transmitter, to the receiver, to the ESC, to the motor, to the battery, to the charger, and the servo. One quick thing before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you can drop this video a like. And if you want more content like this, click the subscribe button as well. Alright, let's get started. All of the electronic components I'm going to show you right now are budget friendly. And all of them will be linked in the description below. First off, this is the transmitter. It does exactly what it says it does. This is what you hold in your hand to control the RC car. You can either give it throttle, reverse, turn left, or turn right. And that gets sent to a receiver. Receiver looks something like this. It has different channels for either the servo, the ESC, or other components. And the input gets translated to the ESC and the servo. So this is the electronic speed controller, also known as an ESC, and this is the motor. And if you purchased a entry-level Tamiya kit, most likely both of these are included in the kit. And just these two components make a Tamiya entry-level kit very friendly to beginners and someone on a tight budget, which combined could cost anywhere from $60 to $300. And later on, I'm going to show you a diagram how all this is related. And here we have a servo. You may already know what a servo does. Essentially, it gets the input from the transmitter to the receiver and the signal gets transmitted here to either turn the servo left or right and it helps steer the car. This particular servo is an excellent value for a touring car build. It is very affordable and has very decent specs. I have four of these servos myself in different cars. Again, I have a link to where you can buy it below. Of course, the car is not going to run without a source of power. And I'm probably going to get a lot of comments saying, how come you recommend a nickel metal hydride battery and not a LiPo? And that's mainly for three reasons. Nickel metal hydrides are less volatile and it's more beginner friendly than a LiPo battery. Nickel metal hydride batteries are affordable and they are compatible with the ESC that came with the kit. And that's something you can't say about a LiPo battery. And here I have a easy to use budget friendly charger. I know a lot of people may not like this charger, but again, it's affordable, perfect for a beginner. There isn't any complicated buttons. It's basically plug and play. All right, and this is how everything comes together. The charger charges the battery. This battery is connected to the ESC. And the ESC does two things. It supplies power to the receiver and the servo. And it also sends signals to the motor for it to go fast, slow, forward, or reverse. And all this, of course, comes from the input from the transmitter, which is connected to the receiver. And this is how all the electronics in an RC car comes together. Certainly, if you have a more advanced car, there may be other components that can be controlled with the transmitter. But that's beyond the scope of this video. We really want to focus on a entry-level Tamiya kit. Well, I hope this video will help you understand what each of the electronic components does in an RC car. If it did, please drop a like, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.